start because it is what time now? Uh, nine, uh, nine oh eight. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. This is Harvey Young. I don't know if you can see me. Oh, with the owl, you probably can see me. We have here. So the some some of you are on Zoom, I know, and uh, some of you are in this classroom here in the Santa Clara office. Uh, we are going to be uh, doing some introductions because I want to find out a little bit about everybody. At the same time, I want everybody to know a little bit about each other. Uh, let's start with let's start with the people and 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 people that are on Zoom. Can you guys, when um, we do the introductions, just tell tell a little bit about yourselves and uh, uh, let let me know about like when you got into real estate and how much experience you had and maybe even when you joined Keller Williams, uh, that would be good for me to know, okay? So let me start by saying, uh, again, my name is Harvey Young. I'm actually the current team leader in Santa Clara. I've been in, well, I've been with KW for about 18 years now uh, in real estate for about 20 years. So I will tell you a little bit about my myself uh, more after we do some introductions, okay? Uh, let, actually, let me start with some of the people that are in the office right now in here. And then the people that are on Zoom, if you don't mind unmuting yourselves and just tell, tell us about yourselves, that would be great. So uh, I usually pick on the person in the front row to start, and that's where I'm going to go. So tell me your name. Tell me when you got to uh, Keller Williams and uh, how long you've been doing real estate for. So, um, yes, hello everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So, my name is Noreen Fessel. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I started real estate almost a year ago. Okay. And right after um, starting my career and passing my exam, I joined Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. I'm with Keller Williams, uh, uh, the Silicon City branch. Got it. Um, and uh, since then, I've been working with them. I've been working with some international referrals as well as the local referrals. Mm. And uh, so far, the experience has been good, other than the market being a little bit slow, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a good experience. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for the introduction. Let's go right here. Hey, Harvey. Uh, my name is Ben. Um, yeah. I started real estate um, about years ago. And start joining KW twelve months ago, so I'm very excited for my future. <laughs> That's great. Good to be here. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Hi, uh, my name is Adrian. Um, I've been working with Kel Williams in City since last week. Okay, I've been doing real estate five months, so um, I'm starting to to know more about this business and see what I can do in the future. What what got you into real estate? Um, well, the main thing is because I want to build wealth uh -huh. for my generation. Right. Um, and the other thing, because I noticed that I really love, this is my passion to be in real estate. Okay. No, that's great. Um, it doesn't matter when you start your career in real estate. I thought I was way past my time when I started, to be honest. I was in, I was a director of HR and staffing in some of the high-tech companies here for almost 20 years as well. So you never know when you're going to uh, change and into a different environment. So everything we've done to this point has been like a stepping stone to the next point. And I don't think I'm going to be doing anything else besides real estate at this point. Um, uh, I think I found where I need to be. So that's good to know. Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, Susie, hi. Uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm glad uh, to join KW uh, about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, me and the bank and another article, we talk about from our team. Mm -hmm. We really like uh, to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, hope to bring more values to this office. <laughs> you know, hey, thanks, Susie, and welcome, uh, obviously, you, Ben, and Iko to your team. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but Keller Williams invented the team process for real estate brokerages. So you're at the right place. Um, Alan Wang, he'll be teaching a class in our office here, our market center, this month about team building. So if you want to know all about team building, you came to the right place. Okay. <laughs> 
Hi everyone, I'm Deepak. Uh, I started as a realtor over there, there was in Santa Clara Valley almost a year back. Um, so far, a uh, few deals down, loving the experience so far, and continue to work with my team here and glad like to see all the new faces as well. Okay, great. It's good for us to introduce each other because you know the more people you know, you're gonna find out that it's easier to do business. Okay, you need to know not a lot uh, just you you need to know many clients obviously but you need to know the other realtors on the other side because that's part of as i say the game we need to play both sides or play with both sides as to say okay actually let's hear from raymond too hi everyone my name is raymond hernandez i'm the director of agent services here at this office um, been licensed for about a year now um Okay. And if you need information, he's the go-to guy. Okay. So anyway, um, the people that are on, okay. The people that are on zoom, uh, it would be great to hear from some of you so that the people in the audience here can actually know a little bit about you and you can know a little bit about yourselves. Is anybody able to unmute them? So, or do I have to unmute them or anything? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so if you can, if what if I, I don't know if I should call on you, because you. So uh, just, okay, let's start with Conrad. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Conrad. Thanks for being here. And if you can, let's start with you. Introduce yourself. Tell me how long you have been with KW and in real estate in general. Okay, well, I started real estate in twenty in twenty oh four, so it's been about eighteen years. Um, but I was only part time up until February of last year. Wow, that's okay, great. And, okay. and the reason why is because of the the job that I had. I worked with gang and violent gang gang and violent youth and young adults for twenty eight years. And so okay. as of February last year, that picture to me right there is, is about the time I started real estate. So I look a little, did a lot different now. <laughs> so anyway, so so um, so I decided to go into full-time real estate. I'm, you know, I'm an older gentleman now. And I've been with KW. I think I just uh, finished my fifth anniversary. And I one thing I will say is this, is that I didn't realize how the technology has impacted real estate so so much um i'm not a techie but i'm pretty good with computers and you know apps and things like that but um, i'm really happy to be here i'm really looking forward to this session and thank you very much okay thanks for that introduction and let me just add on now he said he's an older gentleman but you know what i find in this industry to get you have more experience it's easier to get clients and business so that's a good thing for you okay so good for you okay. all right that's good thank you yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh Vishali, are you there i see your name up there uh yes. can you good morning everyone it's it's great to ignite uh, our fire within so we all can go on the path of real estate and helping people and adding value to their lives. Um, so I joined Caleb Williams uh, last August. I was working with another brokerage. The reason I came to uh, join Caleb Williams is they have a wealth of resources and their training program. The KW University is, uh, uh, I think, one of the best in the real estate industry um, from where we can get training. And the training is from the people like Harvey and everyone around that they are in the industry for years together and they are available to share their wealth. So I'm really glad that I joined KW and learning from the experts. Well, thank you for that. Um, it's, uh, it's a great place as I always tell people, um, and I say it again and again and again, our culture is being interdependent. We all help each other. And there's nothing that I don't share with anybody. 
uh, in the office if they ask me. So from top to bottom, experience or no experience, we share everything. And that's the culture. So we, uh, as, as I put on my business card, working together is winning together. And I believe that. So thank you Absolutely. for being here. I'm glad you're here. And I hope you get to learn some good things today too. And throughout the, uh, the 20 week class of uh, 20, not week, but days of classes. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Definitely. Looking forward to that. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. So the next person I see is Sarah. Can you unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Okay. Oh, here she is. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi, my name is Sarah. Um, I joined the brokerage back in October. So I've been with Keller Williams for about six months now. And um, I think the culture of the company is amazing. And, you know, since I've joined, I've gotten so many, so much support from other agents. So, yeah, I think it was a really great decision. Okay. Tell them which office you're at. Um, I'm at the Santa Clara office. Okay. Okay. I knew that, but I just want other people to know. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Julia, are you there? Unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please. Hi, this is Julia. I joined KW in January this year. So, and um, I, I, I think it's uh, Santa Clara office is uh, uh, good for a new real estate agent because they uh, help each other. Um, I had a better experience in the World Bank actually, and no one um, can help you. <laughs> so we are lonely there, you know. Uh, Santa Clara office just look like a family. Is everybody nice, right? Uh, well, yes, yes, of course. Um, the the question I, I didn't even talk about it during our class today. Um, one of the questions I do ask sometimes when we're hiring agents, I ask them, are you a nice person, right? So, because we only have nice agents here, so I think you're going to be surrounded by some good people because we don't work with mean agents here, okay? So, good for you. Um, uh, Celine, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, so please introduce yourself. Tell me um when you start real estate and when you join kw which office are you from as well so everybody knows uh so i just currently signed on like literally over the weekend with uh keller williams with the san jose location okay um, i had passed my exam in november and i was just kind of looking into um brokerages and i ended up signing up with keller williams um i have actually been in the veterinary field for the past 10 plus years um, and I just wanted something different, and I always had uh, an interest in real estate. Well, we know where to bring our pets if we have any. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sure, you know what, the number, just to just, uh, say something, comment on that. I noticed that the number one thing when you're working with buyers these days, okay, it's not about, hmm, I'm going to get married or my kids. It's about their dogs and pe their pets. They have to have a yard. That is the number one yeah. thing right now. Everybody knows that when a person's looking for a home, they're looking for a place for their pets first. So, you know, I thought that was really interesting. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so I see you there. So uh, can you introduce yourself? Unmute yourself and then tell everybody about yourself. Maybe Vanessa, are you like uh, hanging out and we just don't see you right now? Okay. Oh, it's, right. hi, I'm here. Thanks. Okay. Do you hear let me okay? You're good. So let everybody know about you. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, actually, I'm on the way to the office right now. I oh. had um, something. Yeah, I had something on the way, so I need to stop by, but I'm, I'm on the way there. Um, let me tell me uh, tell you about myself. I, um, I've been with Keller Williams Santa Clara for about a year now, last May when I enrolled. Um, I felt great. Um, the more I'm interested, the more I love it. So, um, and I feel like there's way too much more that I need to learn. That's why I'm here. So I'll see you guys in a little bit and very nice in um, office and nice to meet all of you. Okay. Hey, drive safely. And the thing is, 
Uh, what I tell a lot of people, nobody, including myself, I'll be the first to tell you, nobody knows everything, okay? Then that's why uh, Keller Williams, the culture here is great because we share. Nobody knows everything. And if they tell you they do, they're not telling you the truth. Thank and there's you. people going to be, out. yeah, there will be people out there that are going to tell you uh, or that, you know, oh, I've been around for 20, 30 years and they think they know everything, but they don't. So many of the things that have happened or changed is the in industry standards of what's going on. And so things have changed. And uh, whether they believe it or not, um, you probably know as much as if not more in, in any areas. Okay, so we all can learn from each other. Raymond, I see you. Can you uh, unmute yourself and tell everybody about yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Raymond. And uh, yeah, I've been in business for 32 years and been with Keller Williams uh, for two years. Um, I'm, I was attracted by the culture in the office and also the technology platform. So I'm very, very excited uh, get to know everybody. And I definitely agree with uh, Harvey that uh, we all can learn and grow. And uh, that's why I'm here. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So let me talk about what uh, Vishali and Raymond just said. They talked about the education and technology. So can I tell you that KW is really an education or training company and now a technology company disguised as a real estate company. That's what we are, okay? And we're actually number one, we've been number one in training for a long time and technology will help us to stay on top and it'll help everybody to be more productive, okay? So that's good. Uh, Lena, I see you there. So Lena, can you introduce yourself, unmute yourself and tell us about you, please? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Hugh, or you can call me Lena. Um, I am not yet with KW. I am um, with Timothy Chow Group. Um, I'm doing assistant for Timothy and the whole group. Um, I have my real estate license last year and my um, loan license also. Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah, that's... If yeah. you're with Timothy's group, not to speak over you, if you're with Timothy's group, you're pretty much KW already. You're almost colorized, so that's good. Um, <laughs> Tim you. is a top producer, great guy, and, you know, in and out of real estate, uh, someone that does things very professionally. So I'm glad yeah. you're with that team. You're going to learn a lot from him, obviously, and you've been with him for a while. So welcome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, he did, he... Um... I just want to learn some more because like you say, nobody know everything. So, and I also want to do um, real estate in the future, short in near future. So I'm here to learn. Thank you. Yeah. You're going to be amongst a lot of people because uh, being learning based, we're going to talk about that in this section also and what I'm going to teach. So that's great. Okay. Well, welcome. Okay. Uh, Jessica Wu, are you there? Hi, uh, everybody. My name is Jessica. Well, I'm not yet with uh, Kelly Williams, but uh, before I was uh, I was with Kelly Williams Cupertino office. And the reason why I switched because at the time I was like a uh, part-time job. I, I was doing real estate as a part-time. And until last year, I switched to uh, full-time. So that's the reason I came back to the Kelly Williams training to, to, to find out if it, this uh, training system works for, uh, for me or not. Yeah. Okay, no, been, great. Yeah, I have been in the uh, industry for about, uh, about like seven years. But yeah, mm -hmm. I recently switched to the uh, full time. Yeah. It sounds like that's an ongoing theme. There's a lot of you that have been part time. Actually, a lot of you uh, know Alan Wang. He started out in Cupertino. And I was there for, by the way, I was in Cupertino for 10 years. And this Alan Wang character kept winning all the awards as a part-time person. I kept, and I'm full-time, so I'm thinking, who the heck is Santa Clara office? Because he just makes too much money here. So he left his job at LinkedIn, and he's here. And like I said, he'll be teaching about team building. So uh, thank you for your introduction, Jessica. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's, who else is there? Um, who haven't I called on? Uh, Niha, are you there? 
Morning. Good morning. Tell everybody morning. about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Neha, and I am with Santa Clara office, and I've been with KW for around a year now. And uh, I'm a new agent, so this is my first year of real estate in the Bay Area. And I, like many of you, interviewed with a lot of brokerages. And um, why the reason I, the reason I was moved when I met uh, Laura at the time, uh, our team leader, and um, I, I was really intrigued by the with, by the training that our office offers and just the overall culture and the acceptance of diversity at our office. So I felt that I could just be, you know, blended in easily and um, I would have top-notch training. And I've been very happy so far, to be honest. And every time I represent myself in front of a client and I refer that I'm with from Keller Williams, it brings that credibility. Um, so as a new agent, I feel very uh, secured, so to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that, that's my experience and my learning has been great, phenomenal. Um, it is a tough year and what matters is in a tough year, at least you have peers to look, look up to. Many of you are my friends on this call who I personally talk to uh, outside of office. So I feel that kind of connection and bond and, um, you know, there are phenomenal trainings. So um, there is no lack of knowledge. Well, thank you for that introduction. And, uh, well, the good part is you are not alone. There's a lot of people here and you can you can hear from the people speaking that many people have many years experience and very little experience, but uh, together, you know, that's where we can achieve more as they say, right? So uh, you'll be, I think you're in the right place. Uh, and we're really going to be uh, collaborating with three different offices uh, with uh, Cupertino and Silicon City and Santa Clara. So that's going to make us stronger and better because we can learn from each other. At the same time, you can go to any KW in the world, okay, and attend classes or even use their offices, right? So that's good. Uh, last person I see, I think, is Chun Ling. Chen? Hi, yeah, yeah. My name is Chun Liang. Are you? Yeah. Okay, thank you for correcting me on that. I appreciate that. Please introduce yourself. Oh, um, yes. Uh, oh, I was uh, got the license last July, and then I searching a lot of like uh, aging uh, brokers. And then uh, when when I uh, uh, when when I find a uh, uh, KW and then uh, meeting with Anna at that time, I feel the program and then uh, training uh, program is really really interesting, and then also uh, diversity here is uh, really good. And then uh, later on, I met Mark. Um, he's really good mentor for me, so I'm I'm really. Uh, happy to uh, join this uh, KW big family and now I got uh, like uh, two or three group uh, customer so start with so I really appreciate KW and then uh, my mentor yeah that's great so you're doing lead generation already so uh, in your which office again uh, Cupertino okay no good good okay just good to know so um, okay so I think that's, is there anybody that I may have missed that I don't see on this call? Uh, if so, please unmute yourself um, and uh, let me know if, uh, or uh, please introduce yourself. Anybody else that I miss I, or did we catch everybody? Okay, I think we might have caught everybody. So, okay, now I'm going to change, I'm just changing the, uh, the screen for me. So, okay. Uh, Let's start today, and today is Spark Your Career. So I'm glad everybody's here. Sometimes it's good that we get a fresh start and refresh ourselves. And by the way, the belief system, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, and I'm going to say this a little earlier, but we will get back into this, is you know our belief or my belief, I've been using this for a long time, is no limiting beliefs. So... We could say it's a tough market. We could say it's a good market, okay? And it's whatever you believe. If you say it's 
it's a tough market, it's probably a tough market. But if you say it's an easy market, it's a good market, it probably is that too. But whatever you believe, that's your belief system. But my belief and the belief at Keller Williams is no limiting beliefs. Okay, that's the way we start. Okay, so let's start by going to, uh, okay, well, okay, let me give you the expectations and the guidelines, okay? So we're going to be talking about uh, new ways of thinking, the six personal perspectives, uh, KW culture, KW value, KW resources, your career vision, and introduction to success systems. So we're going to start. Now, this is supposed to be a, uh, normally, I think they usually teach this for four hours, but we're going to try to make this hour and a half. And we start a little bit late, so uh, hopefully we don't go too much further. I'm going to try to speed it up a little, okay? So if you see our, this is like our market center tell, sort of tells you like what kind of uh, days you should be doing what, okay? But we're going to skip over that for now. Okay. Uh, as you can see, real estate expert, lead generation, lead follow-up and transaction. Um, let me go. Okay. So, but let me first say this. Okay. Ignite, it's like a month-long training program designed to equip participants with essentials to build a successful real estate business. Okay. Uh, each lesson uh, will engage a daily success system that will establish core activities in their entire real estate career or for their or your real estate career. Talking to people about real estate, building a database, practicing conversations, and getting to know the market. Okay. Now, in Ignite, after the first day, it consists of two parts. Okay. Daily learning um segment led by you know me for the next uh, hour and a half or so okay and the success system okay now the course moves you through four e objectives does everybody have information or hey raymond does everybody have handouts or should they have gotten information um i didn't know if there was going to be any printed handouts but okay that could, is there a handout for the students here and also uh, because you can sort of see it up here, right? So, okay, if that's okay for now. And then if you need handouts, uh, uh, is it possible we could get some? So if they have to I mean, I take some now, but I don't mm -hmm. think I have okay. for it. Okay, well, you know what? Um, don't even bother doing that right now. Let's just go along with this and then we can always go back, okay? By the way, if anybody on Zoom or in person has questions, then just ask, okay? We'll make this interactive. The more interaction, the more uh, better, and we get to know each other as well, okay? So by the end of the night, you'll be on a path of being a real estate expert, okay? By choice, of course, okay? Creating a robust value proposition for your business, developing lead generation system with lead generation model that comes from the best-selling book uh, by the co-founder, uh, uh, Gary Keller. So... Uh, let me ask something, okay? Has anybody in here read the Red Book or the MREA book or the Million Dollar Real Estate Agent book? Anybody read read that? Okay. How many times did you read it, Deepak? I listened to it once. You listened to it? Audio? Yep. Okay. Okay. I guess I got to be truthful. I never read it either. I've listened to it 10 times, okay, on the audio because I was always driving. So wherever I went, I just had it on continuously, okay? So... Yeah, so if if people need the audio, I I might even have a copy of it. It's on disc now. My car doesn't even take disc CD anymore, right? But um, if you have some kind of a player, then it's good to listen to. And I did listen to it over ten times, so much so I sort of know what chapters I'm looking for that I can go back and refer to the models. Now that book, okay, just so you know, Gary Keller, he went out and wrote this book, it has nothing to do with Keller Williams, okay? As I might have tell, told many of you, he interviewed 50 of the top 100 agents in the country, and that's how he came up with this. That's where it came from. And he's, con I think they're always con uh, uh, continuously updating the book, so you have the best and newest ideas in there, okay? So that's what that's about. Now, establishing a lead follow-up system is based on the KW Touch programs, and, and, and inside the book, 
I, I know I went through this with uh, some of you, like Susie and Ben. I told them to turn to page 144 and 145. And if anybody has that book, okay, you're going to find that it talks about the 8 by 8 the 12 by 12 and, or 12 direct and the 33 touch. Anybody in here know what those are and can explain it to me or to everybody else? Anybody? I know some of you know this. I told you about it. Susie, come on, you know, right? Yeah. Um, what is the eight by eight? eight, 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 eight weeks, you know, and we just send out one, like a uh, contact, like close the card every week for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. So what Susie just said was for eight consecutive weeks, if you want to, for, for example, farm a specific area, you want to accelerate the time that people get to know you. So what Gary Keller did was they made up a name, a fictitious name, a person like the, by the name of John Smith, let's say, okay? And for eight consecutive, consecutive weeks, they sent out a postcard, and that postcard had John Smith's name. At the end of the eight weeks, they did a survey to find out who the people in that neighborhood would use. And they all said John Smith. So they found out doing this metrics that, okay, eight weeks, people are going to get to know you, you know, for next two months. Then they come up with a 12 direct. Does anybody know what that is? For the next 12 months, you have to uh, contact the ones that are in for that month. There you go. Okay. So what Susie said was for the next 12 months, each month you're going to send out another. Once you've done the eight by eight, send out something for eight consecutive weeks, then you're going to send out something once a month for the whole year. Okay. Now, I know some of the top agents, they actually double down. They send out two things a month because they want to make sure they stay top of mind. So if you're going to double down in what some people think is a tough market now to keep out there, this is the time to do it, okay? Just do a little bit more than the other agent. Most agents, they make one call, okay? You will make a second call and a third call, okay? It's sort of like, and I tell people about this too. Um, let's see, anybody on in the audience here? How many cards are in a deck of cards? 52. How many aces are there? All right, good. So if you made 40 calls and everybody said no, okay, and all you're doing is looking for one of those aces because that's going to be your client. So you have 12 more calls and you know there's four aces in there. Are you going to stop at this point? Probably not. You know there's aces there. Eventually, it's a numbers game. You will get someone to say yes and work with them. Okay, so it's important to always be persistent. Okay, the no limiting beliefs. Okay, you will get those people. Okay, so okay, practicing and perfecting the steps of real estate transaction to get to the successful close and get paid. Okay, so these are the things. Uh, the goals to the end uh, to the end ignite uh, with one or more appointments begin with the process of working with a buyer or seller to buy or sell a home and develop success habits that will benefit you uh, for the entire real estate career, okay? Okay, so, okay. Today, we begin the real estate expert choice, okay, of choice. These four lessons will set you up on your path to success with direction, clarity, and enthusiasm. Uh, today, in Spark Your Career, we'll get acquainted with KW and ignite at a high level. You will, okay, apply the KW culture and uh, market centers culture into the way you engage and interact with others, okay? As I told you before, we are interdependent, okay? Not independent. We're interdependent because we share all our ideas. I don't care. Uh, actually, it should be at any KW. And when I go to different KWs, I don't mind sharing my ideas. So, if you're that way, this is the culture that we have here. If you walk into the office here and someone doesn't know who you are, they're going to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Harvey. Uh, are you here for anybody or can I help you with something? That's sort of what our culture is, okay, at all the offices. So I love that. That's one thing I really loved. 
Okay. Again, if you want to chime in at any point, please do so. Okay. So we want to tap into all the resources KW offers and create a vision for the future and set goals. All right. So Ignite instills in all of us new ways of thinking, and it's about having a success mindset with no doubts. Okay. That's what I just said. No limiting beliefs. Today, we will talk about unlimited mindset fueled by six personal perspective, KW culture, the value of working with KW and your market center, KW resources that will set up for success, your career vision, and the daily success system that is going to supercharge your business throughout Ignite and beyond, okay? So let's see, let's see, okay, let me go, okay. I already skipped this one. Okay, culture 12. Okay, I think. Okay, anyone can do it. All right, here we are. Okay, so the, here's a quote from Gary Keller that I wanted to, uh, to share with you. Okay, this quote is from him and his team's uh, published books. Gary is a uh, co founder, executive chairman of KWX and Keller Williams Realty, and one of the most influential. Well, you're gonna in the real estate world. Okay, real estate is a wonderful business and one where you can make a lot of money, run your own successful enterprise, and achieve your biggest dreams. That's his quote. And, and as the quote says, anyone can do it. Not everyone will, and will you? And we all have to ask ourselves that question. There's things that we enjoy doing. And I'll be honest, there's things that we don't enjoy do so much. But if you do everything that, that you're being taught, you will be successful. Sometimes you got to take yourself out of the comfort zone. Okay. I trust by the end of Ignite, okay, you'll be lit up with possibilities of your own success. Okay. Let's see. We're going to start and talk about the six personal perspectives. Okay. So today's that. Agenda, the culture, creative resource, daily success system, new way of thinking, creative you value, uh, your career visioning, and then we're going to recap the other. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see. Would you like to know the key to success uh, and abundance? It's the six personal perspectives. And the six personal perspectives are ways successful people who come between, before us think and approach problems. Or challenges. It's about the mindset of success. These came about from uh, Gary Keller researching successful people in all the fields and asking the question, what is it that differenti differentiates those who achieve at the highest level from those who don't seem to accomplish as much? So a lot of this stuff is in that red book, but we're going to discuss some of these things here. Right. The first Perspective. Okay. okay. So these are the six personal perspectives. All right. And the first one is commit yourself to self mastery. Okay. The first pers perspective that all high achievers share is commit to self mastery. Notice it's not commit to mastery, it's commit to self mastery. Okay. What's the difference? Self-mastery is possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that make you, make you master of you. Okay? When you commit to achieving self-mastery, you know your, own, your own goal, know your strengths and weaknesses, know how to work with both strengths and weaknesses to seek and master the necessary knowledge, skills, and habits to reach your goal. Throughout Ignite, you'll be acquiring the skills and developing habits to be successful and moving you towards self-mastery. Actually, is everybody here committed to self-mastery? <laughs> okay, all right. I believe you you answered the question to yourself by just actually being here today. We all want to do that. So, let's see. I love talking about the Pareto rule. That's what this is, the 80-20 concept. Anybody ever hear of it? 
And can anybody comment on it? Anybody? What's that? Okay, it, it does apply to everything, okay? Okay, so the second perspective is commit to the 80-20 principle, which is the Pareto rule, okay? The idea of 20% of your actions lead to 80% of your results may be one of the most powerful principles you can apply to your life. It's about getting the most from your time and effort. It's about maximizing your result. It's about having focus. I'm just going to say some things off the top of my head, too, okay? Ignite, we will identify your 20% for you, uh, your dollar productive activity in lead generation. When you commit to this, you will make more money, have more time with your family, and be more organized. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So let's talk about the Pareto rule. Um, and I always say something like, 20% of the time you talk, 80% of the time you listen. Most of us are not good listeners when we first get into this industry. Okay? I was not. And I was an HR person, so all I did was talk. It's just gab, gab, gab. But then I found out how important it was to listen. So the person in charge is the person asking the questions. So only 20% of the time should you be talking. And your role is to ask questions. Right? Because if you don't ask the questions, you're never going to learn. And 80% of the time, you're learning about your client. So that's that 80% of the listening. Sometimes it's good to be silent and let them talk. And that's what I do. And uh, before, I used to think when I'm meeting a client, I think I know better for them. I said, like, oh, that's an ugly house. Oh, this has these problems. I wouldn't live there. But, you know, maybe they would. Maybe it's okay for them. Maybe they love it but we have to listen to them and really dig and find out you know, what, what they want, okay? So, okay, put, so when I say, when I talk to my clients, I tell them, I tell them this, you can, you want, I can write this down at some point, but I tell them this, I tell them that they are the ones who are gonna make the final decision. Okay, this is about being in control, by the way. Okay, if you're not in control, you're going to be driving your clients around and being a taxi driver, right? And you don't want to do that. If you are not in control, you're never going to close. You can't put food on the table. You're going to be paying for gas all your life. So I tell my clients, you will make the final decisions, okay? However, I will not let you make any bad decisions. I will protect okay? And by doing that, they think they will be making the final decisions. But really, it's you, because you're going to guide them and funnel them to make the right decision. So in, you really are the one in control, not them. You, hopefully, you understand what I'm saying, okay? So this is what I'm always telling them. Be in control or if you want to close, okay? And... I will ask a lot of questions because that's how I get to know them. And then when you get to know them, you can guide them and lead them to where they want to be. And that's where your value really is to them. Okay. And uh, I, I say this, I say, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And the more questions I ask, the more I get to know you. Okay. The more I get to know you, I understand your needs better. The better I understand your needs, the better service I'm going to give you. And I will even say this, and the better service I give you, the more referrals you're going to give me. Okay. And that works. It's simple as that. All right. So be a great listener. Okay. That 80, 20%. Okay. Do you want to be the 20% of the agents that make 80% of the commissions? Or do you want to be the 80% of those agents who get the 20% that's left? So apply it that way too, okay? That works both ways. All right, let's see. Okay, move from E to P. Okay, this, the, actually, any questions on that? Okay, we'll keep going. Feel free, just jump in, okay? If you have your own kind of experiences, just feel free to jump in, okay? So the, by the way, Zoom people, people on Zoom, if you have questions, just jump in, please, okay?
Don't be shy. Okay, the third perspective that top performers recognize and understand is how to move from E, which is entrepreneurial, to P, purposeful. Okay, all of us can attain a certain level of success utilizing natural abilities, and we can also expect to hit a ceiling at some point. Okay, so how many people have started something and then you just hit a ceiling, you just can't break above it? Anybody have that happened to anybody here? Okay, can you, you want to share anything of how it might happen and what you did to go and get beyond that? It's not the easiest thing, you know, right? Yeah, so apart from real estate, uh, I do professional dancing. So mm -hmm. many years back when I was, I was starting as an instructor and I started to set up my own dance company, um, while doing a full-time job, I was trying to do this on the side as a small business and then you only have been in hours, right? So uh, kind of hit the ceiling where I could only teach a certain number of classes, but the demand was increasing to so how I could do it. So I slowly started developing some systems around my business, and then I hired more instructors. And then uh, we, we we were not able, we were not only able to cater to more students, but we were also able to open more locations across the area. And then I hit another ceiling where the admin work was taking too much time, mm -hmm. and that then it was time to hire non teaching staff. So this is how it was scaled by then. Okay. So you keep hitting, say, I mean, these are good problems to have. Yeah. That means the business is growing, but at the same time, you, as they say, you don't, you don't only have to work in the business, but you also have to work on the business. So right. Kind of expanding, mm -hmm. setting up systems and processes so you can scale efficiently. Yeah. So that that's a great comment you made that. We're always hitting ceilings, and that could be a good thing because you, if you're going to grow, you, you will hit these kinds of ceilings. And um, someone mentioned when we we're doing introductions, diversity of the kind of people. And I forgot who said that, but um, <clears throat> I want to touch on that. A long time ago, okay, when I was a director of HR, I was actually a global uh, director at the time. And uh, I was at this company. And they're all Chinese. And they said, Harvey, we would like for you to come into our company and diversify us uh, so that we could be more. And I said, well, you can see I'm Chinese, right? What do you want to hire me for? He goes, well, your communication is very good. Could you help us? And I said, well, what is the problem that you're having with um, and that why you want why do you want to diversify? And he pretty much just told me, he said, you know, we have a Chinese way of thinking because everybody here is Chinese. And, and it's not that it's bad, but if we get stuck on some kind of uh, issue or a ceiling, then we think one way and we can't get out of it. But when we diversify with all the different cultures and all the different people that we have in here, there are many different ways that we can solve these or reconcile these kind of issues. So it's great that we have such diversity in our office, and I'm I'm loving to be in our office because of that, and in Keller Williams in general, you know, it, that's the way it is. So that's what um, that's what I think is important, you know. So okay, so I think what we have to be is more, as they say, purposeful. Okay, okay. So what is the definition of purpose? Purposeful. Okay, uh, it means. Focusing on models and systems that organize you and your tasks into the most efficient uh, and effective endeavor possible. So I remember also when I finally left HR, I was at a company called Applied Materials in Santa Clara. After I got done, I had to lay off a lot of people uh, after 911, and I felt terrible to lay people off. They didn't just lose their jobs, uh, it was a recession. And that lasted a long time and people lost their homes. I didn't feel very good about that. So I left and I thought that, okay, I'll just take some time off. I know all the HR people around, so I will probably find a job easy. Well, guess what? Six months later, after doing nothing and having fun, I got bored and I decided, okay, I better find a job, but I couldn't. So as I told some people, I went back to a friend of mine that I laid off. And she got me into the real estate. And this is where I'm at now for the last 20 years. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, we can go to a lot of people 
Uh, and, and, and if, okay, so let me go to this. When I first got into the real estate, um, I thought, how am I going to be successful? Where am I going to get my clients? How am I going to do this? Because people will help you to get your license. But as we all know, and I hate to say it, and you probably know, everything we learned in that principles book and all that, 95% of it is not going to help you. It's the stuff we're in here together learning right now that's going to help you in your business. So that's what I found out. And when I got going, by the way, I don't care what industry you come from, okay? We all have transferable skills, each and every one of you. We can learn from each other. I'm learning from everybody all the time, no matter their skill level, I learn from you. And I think that's the thing about what we do here is we're learning based so that we can always get better, okay? So, okay, the example that, let's see, we can, let's do an example, okay, of your own life. Uh, many who left a salary job or for a career in business and real estate say, they hit a ceiling in how they, they were uh, promoted or how much they were paid. Okay, I, high achievers are always looking for purpose of the purposeful way. By doing this, they break through the ceiling of their natural behavior. Now, my first year, I made, um, this is back in 2003 or four. I think I made just under 250,000 by a couple hundred dollars. And I was thinking, wow, where'd all this money come from? And I'm thinking, yeah, that's pretty good. But what the heck did I do? I didn't even remember. So the next year, I was more purposeful in the systems and the things. I tried to write things down. That's I had to take a few steps back. I didn't make as much money the second year because I had to figure out what I did the first year. And I really didn't remember. I didn't know. I just did it. So... Once I started putting these systems together for myself, then everything started to make sense. It became systematized and organized. Okay, and that's where I think being here, they have the models. We don't have to reinvent the wheels. That's why here is a place where we can all be more successful quicker, okay? And they'll teach you all those things. Most places don't teach that, okay? Let's see. Okay. How you, yes. How did you do that on the second year? Is that what we do it? Oh, this is what you're doing. <laughs> okay. So the second year, well, I'm telling you, I was really puzzled. I go, what the heck? Where? Okay. Honestly, I said, where's this money coming from, and how did I do it? So I had to backtrack, go all the way back to the beginning, and find out what I did. Yeah. And uh, again, I used my HR background because I didn't. Honestly, at that time, there was nobody where I was at, at the company I was at, that was teaching me what to do. They didn't know how to teach it, okay? And I wasn't at KW at the time. But here, they teach you these things, okay? So if I'm you right now, learn the system. If you don't have that red book, get in my office after. I'll get you that red book, okay? And, you, and I'll show you, like, certain areas where you need to follow. And starting with that page 144, 145, the 8x8, the 12, by, 12 direct and the 33 touch. Okay, I didn't ask, what is the 33 touch? Does anybody know? Zoom or in front of me, anybody know? The 33, uh, the 33 touches, or does anybody? All right, I will tell you, okay. So <laughs> make things go along quicker. The 33 touch, okay. Combined with the 8x8 and the 12 direct, you sort of understand that, okay? So these things, the 33 touches, if you, how many days are in a year? 365, correct, okay? Divide that by uh, 33 equals, you know the answer. 10 days. Huh? Uh, for 10 days, you have to connect your client at least the one. Um, it's every 17 days. Yes. Okay. So if you divide 365 days into 33, it's every 17 days you need to make a touch. You don't physically touch them maybe, but a postcard, an email, 
a text, a phone call, having coffee, something like that. Every 17 days, they will never forget who you are. Okay. And this is what we fail to do. That's what I fail to do. Yes, Adrian. When you do a phone call with someone like you mean as peers or clients or uh, someone that you just put in the database. Okay. Let me ask you this first. How many people do you know? I think you you know more. How many people do you know? Um, many, more than 200. I think you know more than that. Yeah. Ben, how many people do you know? The same 200. <laughs> Come on, I, I know you. Okay, who's on Facebook? How many people are on your Facebook? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay. Now that's my point. I have... Now I have 2,500 people on my Facebook. Do I know them all? Maybe some of them I don't. I friend all KW people, okay? I have foosball friends because I used to play professional foosball. I friend all those guys too. I don't even hesitate because I know it's a good family community kind of thing. Hey, foosball players need homes too, right? So, okay. So I guess what I'm saying is we know a lot of people. You meet a lot of people. Okay, and you want to get to know them. We will get into it in here as we go move along on how to get in touch with these people. So I'm going to answer your question down the line. Okay, but yes, uh, good point that you brought up. All right. So okay, let's let's go through these. Uh, this fourth one. Okay, the fourth perspective. Okay, the fourth perspective is an obvious one, and uh, one you're already doing by being here today being learning based. Okay. That's what we're about. That's why I said we're technically a training company disguised as a real estate company. Okay. Okay. A learning based individual appreciates learning for their own improvement. They know what they know and know where is, they know there is always more to know. Okay. An individual who does not appreciate learning is what's referred to as ignorance based. <laughs> Okay, and none of us are ignorance based there. Okay, okay. Let's see. Any questions on that one? Okay, okay. Quote from Albert Einstein. Okay, being learning based means staying in curiosity and being eager to learn more. Okay, so that's what Albert Einstein said. He's a pretty smart guy, right? Okay. Number five. The fifth perspective is remove your limiting beliefs. High achievers remove beliefs that hold them back. Um, okay, I'm going to be honest here too. There's one thing that I have a tough time doing these days for me, and that would be door knocking, okay? I did it once. I was successful at one time 13 years ago. I've never done it since, okay? Now, what I found out, there's many things we can do, but do the things that you do that or that you enjoy doing and that you feel comfortable with. And if you're doing those things, do it better than anybody else, okay? But if you want to try something like door knocking, actually, let me ask, anybody here door knock? Wow, you guys are brave. Okay, so I would hang around you guys and learn what you what you do. What was your experience on door knocking, Adrian? Um, I think with my last team, uh, we did fifty door knockings every every week mm -hmm. for open houses. Yeah, just inviting everyone for an open house. Hey, this is what we have. This open house. This thing is going to be Saturday. Saturday, we can do something exclusively. Mm -hmm. You know, someone might be want to move in this area. Um, and then pretty successfully, like I would say 10 touches with people and most of them, uh, nobody actually just opened the door. I just left the flyers. Okay. Yeah. And so it's sort of like that 52 cards in a deck. Eventually you're going to hit a few aces, right? And a lot of them are, are no's. But by the way, what does no mean to you? Anybody? What does no mean to you? Nobody. It's, it's a no right now, but it may not be a permanent. 
<laughs> okay, Deepak, great answer. No means not now. That's all it means, okay? Let me give you a quick example. So let's just say I knocked on a door, which I didn't, but I'm gonna give you this as an example, okay? So, or actually I talked to someone in the neighborhood and let's just say I did knock on their door and I said, eventually, you know, so are you thinking of selling your home? And they'll say, no, never, because they always say that. So like going to Macy's or something and the person walks up to you, just looking, right? So the same thing happens. So when you talk to the seller and they say, no, I'm never going to sell, okay? You, I mean, you, have you experienced that, Adrian? I experienced that people, when I invited them for an open house, they said, no, I'm not selling the house. Right, okay. So did you pursue it after? No, actually, I just told them, like, well, I'm just inviting everyone from an open house. I'm not selling the house. Okay, here's an approach you might use, okay? So that person says, to me, just, just between you and me right now, okay, I want you to tell me, I'm never going to sell. So, Adrian, are you thinking about selling your house? Um, okay. And, uh, well, let me ask you something. You've been living here for how long? Been living here for a long time. Fifteen um, years. How long? Ten years. Ten years. That's a long time. Can, let me ask you this. What do you like about this area that, why you're not going to sell? What are the things you love? Well, because I've been living here with my chillers. We have, uh, you know, um, yeah, we're built... Um, a family, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. and then there's schools, there's a, a good area where we want to live. Uh, yeah. No, speak up. I want you to all speak up. Yeah, yeah. No, well, these are great. So, okay. Hey, these are great reasons why to live in this area because of schools and the neighborhood and the other family, your family itself. But let me ask you one more question. If you could move anywhere in the world, where would you move? Just pretend. If you could move anywhere in the world, where would you move? Well, I would love to move in probably Los Altos Hills. Los Altos Hills. Okay. All right. You just went from never going to, to why well, I'd move to Los, Los Altos Hills. So that's my point. Somebody eventually will say, okay, I'm going to move. So there's a way to approach it. And we don't say never okay and no limiting beliefs we can talk to people eventually and find out hey if we listen and we ask the questions we are in control the 80 20 rule remember so everything is purposeful purposeful of what we do okay and i i did this with susie too i said when she came in not too long ago i i was telling her that um uh what i do with my my, my uh clients when they first come in you know i ask them before we start working, I need to ask you a very important question. Are you a nice person? And I look them in the eye. And, and what do they have to tell me? Yes. Right? <laughs> I haven't ever had anybody tell me they're a mean <laughs> a person. Then what I'm doing is I am setting them up. Because later on, when your transaction goes sideways, with no fault of your own, because it can, right? There's other factors that we cannot control. And your client starts to yell at you, okay? They, or they get upset. You, you need to be able to calm them down. And the way I do is like, hey, don't you remember that first question I asked you before we start working together? You are a nice person. And they go, oh yeah, I'm sorry, okay? And stuff like that. <laughs> and, and I say, look, that's why I'm here. That's why we're on the same team. I'm going to help you to get over this. Okay. Should I should ask more when I didn't, I don't think I asked Ben or Susie when they started, but I should also, I usually do, but I haven't done it because I sort of knew already by talking to him on the phone. I normally ask, are you a nice agent? Like I was telling you, we you don't hire mean agents here, right? So I can say do the same thing, but it's a great setup question. Okay. When I go to open house, I do some silly stuff. Let's see. Do I have? I don't have it with me. I give them my card. And uh, on my card, let me just grab it real quick, okay? Oh, it's right here. Hang on a second. I want to show the people on Zoom, too. 
some of you might know my technique, but um, I'll give them my card and I'll say, here you go, picture's free. And they look at me like I'm crazy, right? But they know that they chuckle and they say, okay, and they laugh. My purpose is to break the ice, but it also it's to, I gave them something. I want something back. I'm going to get something back. What am I going to get? Their contact information. Okay. So later, if you want, grab my card because anybody in here who has questions or anything, you need my information. You can ask me anything, anytime. Okay. So, because like I said, we all share. Okay. So I thought I'd just uh, share that. So no limiting beliefs is, is sort of important. Okay. Uh, in order to successfully develop at a higher level, you must uh, clear your mind of limiting beliefs. Throughout Ignite, you will learn how to combat your limiting beliefs and turn them into action. What limiting beliefs are you having right now as you embark on this new career? Let's do an activity to unlimit any limiting beliefs, okay? Um, actually, in order to achieve your success, you must release any fear of failure, rejection, and success. That's not easy, okay? Uh, just the fact that I told you, eh, I'm not really a door knocker, okay? What are other ways you can go out there and, and, and meet people? Anybody? Other ways you can go meet people? Go on walks. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah? Anybody else? What are ways you go out and meet people? Social media. Social oh, media. Abby, we kind of hear y'all. Someone need to um, mute. I'm on mute. No, okay. It's okay now. Can you yeah, hear? I, yeah, we Hello? couldn't hear you the past couple of minutes. We couldn't hear what you were saying. Oh, you can hear me now, though, right? Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I don't think you missed too much. We were just asking people in the audience about uh, a few things as far as the beliefs. Okay, now we are going to be going to number six and being accountable. Okay, and that's an attitude approach to your entire life. Um, uh, Okay, an accountable person says everything in my life is the result of my choices and owns their life. Okay, accountability is a tool for continually changing the results in your life in those areas that matter most. That's, that's your 20%, okay? A person who is accountable in their 20% says, I own my life and in certain areas, I want to continually improve my results. I will be purposeful and I will be learning-based to continue improving. Okay, Ignite will provide you with tools to develop and cultivate your accountability to be successful. Okay. By the way, it could be where who holds you accountable? Maybe the person in the classroom next to you, you could choose someone. Maybe you're in a productivity coaching program. Maybe it's someone that 
you're in, on a team with, okay? Uh, and sometimes it could be a coach. By the way, how many, how many people here, I mean, they, that hold you accountable? And, and one of the examples I've always heard was, how many coaches does Tiger Woods have? Anybody know? 14, okay? He has one for his swing, one for nutrition, one for his fitness, and it goes on and on. So, you know, they hold him accountable, and that's how he gets to be better. So someone like that, he's got 14 coaches. That's, that's a lot of coaches, right? So, yeah, we all know that we can always get better, and we need – help. We can't do these things usually alone. Well, you could, but it's better. It's more fun sometimes, to be honest, to have someone help you. Or if you want to be on a team, you hold each other accountable. Okay. So you learn to play together and be successful together. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So completing all the Ignite assignments, asking for help, having an accountability partner, a productivity coach or other coach or a mentor. Okay, to keep you accountable, that's that's important to me. Okay, so I have I'm I'm on a team. I have a team. Okay, and my partners keep me accountable. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick little story. I was working full time, and there was another person that was working part time. This is when I was in the Cupertino office ten years ago, over ten years ago. So the person didn't know as much about open houses, and I was, and she was just walking by. This is about five or six in the afternoon. So I just went over some things. I said, I would do this, this, and this. And then we started talking and then we started working together. She was part-time. So in her first year, and I'll say only about like eight or nine months, she made about $90,000 part-time, uh, just under 90000 And she's working full-time in a high-tech company as a uh, business analyst. She's now the manager. And she has two kids, a family, and everything like that. I'll tell you, she was so efficient. And the thing that impressed me was she held me accountable. She always said, Harvey, did you call for inspections? Did you call the title company for this? Did you pick up this? She was holding me accountable, doing all the stuff. That person taught me a lesson. Well, I need to be more accountable. I wasn't. Okay, I thought I was, but I wasn't. And it was someone who brought out to me that was only part time. Okay, and that's why, to be honest, they made almost as much as I did working part time because they were so efficient. So then that's part of when I started to learn how to put these systems and being more purposeful. Okay, it helped me. Okay, so let's see, that's the purposeful part or the, uh, okay. Okay. Happiness, okay, is not an individual sport. What does that mean to anybody? Happiness is not an individual sport. Okay. Your business success is not an individual sport. Okay. As Car Gary Keller um, has learned, no one succeeds alone. And that's what I'm trying to say, I guess, is it's easier to do things together. So when you're doing things together, what, what else do you get back from that? For me, it's, it's different for everybody. For me, I'm getting time back. Okay, I get more time to do some other things that I want to do. So that's the, the thing that I, I like about working with other people. So I can have more time. I can rely on someone else when, hey, I have to do this. I have another uh, commitment or I want to go on vacation. I want to spend time with my family or whatever. Okay. So, we always have the aha moment. Did anybody, does anybody have an aha in Zoom or in front of me? Anything? Okay. Okay. I will just, let's see, the ahas. Okay. Well, it's important to understand that your success in business is not all about getting paid for helping people to buy or sell. It's about your mindset, your beliefs, your commitment to being the very best you can. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. 
Anybody just, someone just got on, okay. Okay, let's, let's go to, we're gonna go to KW Culture, okay. Okay, uh, MVVBP. <clears throat> it stands for Mission, Vision, Values, Beliefs, and Perspective. Okay, we'll take a look at the, the mission and beliefs of KW. Um, let's see. Ignite focuses on helping uh, to build careers worth having. Of course, the intention is to build businesses worth owning as well. Many KW agents have built businesses worth owning and are living a great life they envision for themselves. Many KW agents have grown to the point where they are chief being fulfillment by providing experiences for others and laying foundations for legacies worth leaving. We do, I think you might know that if you're with KW long enough and uh, well, actually I'm getting a little too far ahead, but if you bring in other people, it's like having something you can will onto your uh, family members and things, but we'll talk about that, okay? So the part of the MVV BP is the B for beliefs. We call them the Y, 4, C, 2, Ts. All Keller Williams associates agree to abide by these beliefs because it's the right thing to do. Does any, can anybody name some of the Y, 4, C, 2, Ts without looking at the chart? I'll put them up there though. Mission, vision, thing. Okay. Okay. Mission to build careers worth having, business worth owning, lives worth living, experience worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Okay, let me check this. All right. <clears throat> My favorite one and the one I really talk about is the win-win, okay? Because if someone loses, you don't really win. Someone's going to lose. So I like the win-win, but... If you think about all these things, this is the belief system for uh, KW that's always been there. And these were developed, and from what I know, from all the agents. This company is built by agents for agents. The agents, the top 20% of the agents in the office uh, get an opportunity to be on the ALC. And the ALC is the Agent Leadership Council. Uh, they call it different things, but for the most part, those 20% of the people are people anybody can go to, and you can tell them about things that maybe would help us, us to improve, because we can always improve, and they actually help drive the office, okay? They dictate what's happen what happens in the office, so if you get to be part of that 20%, then you earn that right to be invited to the ALC. And when I was in Cupertino, I think I was on the ALC for 10 or seven straight years. Then I had to do some other things. I couldn't do it, but there's, there's always fresh blood coming in or uh, new people coming in and inputting and using their ideas. So it just keeps making the office more diverse and more um, fun to be around actually. Okay, so, all right, okay. Let's see, let's discuss E for equity for a minute. Okay, passed in 1968, the Fair Housing Act made it illegal to discriminate concerning the sale, rental, financing of housing based on race, religion, national origin, color, gender, identity, and sexual orientation. This law was expanded to prohibit discrimination based on disability of family status in 1988. So, these are some of the things that uh, the National Association of Realtors reminds us that we are the stewards of the rights of all to own, use the transfer you, uh, and transfer property, and that we must protect and free uh, the free market that depends on equal, equal opportunity. Okay. And so we must uh, hold ourselves responsible to protect housing rights in our country. In addition, being open to diverse clients and their needs is just good business, okay? And throughout Ignite, we'll present more about how equity, diversity, and inclusion can benefit your business, okay? Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to the next one, okay? 
Oh, by the way, anybody ever hear of Red Day? What is it? Um, um, they still have their uh, everything. Um, yeah, everybody wear red t-shirts. Very fun. Like, uh, you know, their homeless area. Uh, um, or do something else, but I was at the homeless area at the end of the day. Okay. And it's such a beautiful uh, action. Okay. Once a year. Okay. Uh, well, Red Day began in 2009, and it stands for the Red, okay, stands for re the Renew, Energize, and Donate. Okay. Renew, Energize, and Donate. It's a day of pouring into the communities across the globe and across. Uh, and occurs on the second Thursday of each May, okay? So what happens is every single KW office goes out to do some community work. I remember one time we went to a park. We tore up all the weeds, put, replanted things, and later on, the park allowed us at KW and Cupertino to have a picnic there. Or our, our summer barbecue or things like that. We've gone to, um, what do you call it, the, the harvest place where the people go and, and, and donate their time to help the, uh, what is, what's the name of that? The harvest? Uh, second thing? harvest. Yeah, second harvest. Thank you. Can you talk about that? What do you do at second harvest? Uh, no, I, so it is basically, uh, I did not join KW till that time, okay. but I have seen pictures and uh, yeah. you saw the food uh, that is donated by other people. Yes. Okay. So anyway, thank you for reminding me. I, I just knew it was harvest. So it is second harvest and we went in there. I think we had to put like uh, boxes together and we had to put these kind of of uh melons in there some type and i and we had to put five of them in there that was the goal of five every box had to put five of these things in there and there was tons of them okay tons and so we boxed it all and after that we took a nice photo but it was good because you felt good that you're helping these people who need these uh the, the food and all the different kind of services that to provide so Red Day could be many different things. We could be going to a homeless type like area and, and refurbishing it, um, painting, doing cutting lawns. It could be fixing things, building things uh, to help other people. So it's a nice thing that we all do on that day. The entire Keller Williams does that. Uh, and, and so it builds camaraderie also within the office. So it's just a fun day, especially when you see like, thousands of people running around all in red, red t-shirt, okay? So it, it just put, brings us together, okay? Let's see. Any ahas for that? Okay, let's see. Okay, I wanna skip on to something else. By the way, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to touch briefly on this. And for KW, we actually have won a lot of awards for this company. When I first started, I think the company had, we were number six or seven as far as large in the world. We're only like the sixth largest in the country at the time. And I think there was about 45,000 agents. Can anybody tell me how many agents there are at KW now? Any guess, or just take a guess. 30,000. How many? 30,000. No, that's when I started. <laughs> no, you didn't. I thought I started about 30, 35,000 agents, uh -huh. or 45, 8,000 agents, excuse me, okay? And it's grown. I believe it's, I believe it's 250,000 worldwide. Somewhere you know, around. That. We are the largest real estate brokerage with the most amount of agents, okay? And... And that's something that's impressive. Uh, did you know that? 250,000 plus agents worldwide. So at that time, there's other companies that were larger 
And at that time, uh, they had like about 84,000, the top one. Okay. It was the one, hey, Julia, if you're listening, it's the one that you were at. <laughs> but we don't say bad things about other companies. Okay. We don't do that. Okay. We just know that we're bigger. Okay. And that's good enough. <laughs> okay. And we do other things. So the, every, every company brokerage, they have things that are good about them. Okay. And I look at all the people in the other offices as people we work with, other colleagues. Okay. I remember when I first started, I started looking at these, oh, this XYZ company or this one, two, three company. You know, I can't stand those guys because they have all the market and stuff like that at the time. Things have changed. Come, we've come a long way here. So I don't look at it like that because we need to get out of the way as agents of the other agents too and let the buyer and seller decide what they want to do. We just guide them, but it's not a fight with the other agent, which sometimes it often is where there's conflict. We don't do that. We work with the other agents. And if there are nice agents, invite them in to join, put them into your profit share tree. Okay. So you will um, meet a lot of nice agents out there and, you know, there's no need to be enemies or anything. And when I first started, it was sort of like that. I could see it. Yeah, I could sort of feel it, but a lot less. Okay. So I support many other organizations. I would encourage you to get involved. So, so now um, I just became um, a, a board advisor for BNAR. Uh, that's the Vietnamese Association. I joined uh, the other week. Um, last week, I joined the, another association, Carl. That's the Korean Association. But I'm also part of ARIA, Asian Real Estate Association of America. And these aren't just Asian people. It's all very diverse. Okay. So I was a board of directors on there. And there, there, I met a lot of people. I got a lot of referrals. I, get, I just got another referral. Well, one person that gave me a referral from um, the ARIA, it was down in LA. I had five transactions from them last year. Person called me. Yesterday, we went to Los Gatos, and they want to buy a house there, and they want me to help them sell the house that they um, that I helped them to buy in SoCal. Okay? And they have another house in San Jose they want to sell now. So one person, eight transactions, probably about a year, a, year, a little bit more than a year now. But one person gave me that many. So I encourage you to you know, know more people on other brokerages, and other or joint associations that support each other. It, it's fun. The problem I have is I eat a lot of food all the time with all these places. It is a lot of fun. I have great food. Okay. So these are these things, top franchise for veterans, top female friendly company. I did not know that. Okay. There are more females in our office, I think, than we do. World's best employers for 21. Uh, America's best customer experience america's best employers for women and new grads that i didn't know best employer for diversity i didn't know that but i, I just know that our office is very diverse okay now something that was sort of interesting was uh during the football season uh keller williams uh when i was here in the office I was talking to our MCA that many of you know, Stacy. Okay, Stacy Farmer, and uh, there's another person in our office here. Her name is Donna Castillo. And I mentioned to them that, hey, I'm going to be going to the football game on Sunday. But they sent out something that they had for uh, women of the 49ers, and they and they and Donna quickly looked it up, and she went to Levi Stadium, which is down the street. And she networked with about three or 400 other, I'm going to say, powerful women that were leaders in the industry. She networked with them. And now we're thinking, hey, we're going to start a women's type group just for the women here if they want so they can network and do stuff. So if you want to do more about that or, or know more about that, maybe you should talk to Donna because she wants to do something. And at the same time, maybe continue to network with all the people, different people that you can meet in the Bay Area that are women that like the 49ers, okay? If nothing else, 
Um, I did have one 49er client that works there, and he went to the Super Bowl the one year that they went. Uh, he brought, after I helped him to buy a house, he said, hey, Harvey, I went to the Super Bowl, and I brought you back a football. I thought it was going to be a fake football with a fake laser signature. It was the real thing. I couldn't believe it. Okay, it was a real thing signed by the uh, the commissioner, and uh, it had all these uh, things inscribed on it. But you know what? You never know who you're going to meet. Okay, and so when you meet these people, you can take advantage of it and you can meet more people. But anyway, we're going to try to provide those kind of opportunities as well. Okay, let's see. It's moving on. Okay, training and coaching, Connect Live. I'm going to skip over this right now because of, uh, one of the events we just recently had was Family Union. Um, I would encourage you to attend Family Union or even Mega Camp. Mega camp is really cool. Usually that's at in Austin, Texas. You meet all the top producers around the country and you network with them so you can get referrals. Right now, now I have referrals myself, Pennsylvania, New York, Austin, Texas. I think I'm getting one more, but I, I just don't remember right now. But you can get them all the time. And KW has a big, diverse referral system. It's great, okay? And I can tell you more about that, okay? So let's skip on for this one. Okay, okay, command. Who here is learning about command or using it? Anybody? Great. Any, what's your experience with command right now? Anybody? Uh, I think it's a lot of features. Yeah. That's uh, really just great CRM. Uh, we could really leverage it and save time, be more efficient, but it's a uh, it challenge between you and me. When I should learn and how much should I learn to the point to actually start saving time and making more important. Okay. So, um, good point. Having my VA learn it more than I'm learning it. Okay. It. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay. So what Deepak just said that he's using command and he's trying to utilize it so he can utilize his time. Um, he doesn't know it as well as his VA, virtual assistant, okay? So if you hire a virtual assistant, my VA knows command also, okay? We had to do some training and there's some VAs or some of those kind of places that the VA already knows about command, okay? They've learned it. Ours knew a little bit about it, but we had to teach them about what our office requirements are, okay? So getting a VA can really, really help you. And, I, and, and you know, it could be as little as $5 an hour or some of them are like $12 an hour. They can cold call for you. They can do all your TC work, okay? I'm not trying to put the TCs out of business because it could cost like four to $500 to, for a transaction. Whereas I use my TC and they take care of everything. It's $5 an hour or if it's full time, $200 for the month. They cover everything. And they're also taking care of advertisements for me for creating some ads and things, postings on Facebook, Instagram, you know, social media like uh, Deepak was talking about. So does your uh, VA do some of these things for you? Yes. Great. So, yeah. Listen, he's still technically in the first month. Mm -hmm. Just figuring out the process. And I, I tried to create a, a like a monthly and a weekly goal for her. Mm -hmm. But it's, sometimes I also try to struggle just because we you know, trying to get used to each other's uh, working style, but it's getting a lot better. Like when I look three weeks or four weeks back than where we are right now, yeah. we already have a trade process for social media. Mm -hmm. And she's already ordered a tons of contacts for me in mm -hmm. command. But now we, I'm just trying to see how to leverage those contacts there. Okay, great. So Deepak was mentioning that he's using his VA to help him on social media and also to help him with his command and putting in, adding uh, people to the database, which is important, okay? So if you add them to command, guess what's in command? The 12 direct, the eight by eight, and the 33 touch. You can automate all these things. So utilize these tools that uh, KW has for you so that 
you can spend more time talking to people. Okay, as an HR person, I used to tell my brother, he got mad at me for this because he was an engineer. So when I first started, I moved into the Bay Area, 1996. And as an HR generalist at the time, I think I was making like 45,000. My brother as an engineer, he's about 80,000. And then found out that, you know, down the line, um, I began to overcome what he was making. Now, pretty soon, I'm at 98, and he's at, okay, he's gotten up to like 84 at the time. So I made fun of him. I said, hey, you know what? This is pretty cool. All I need to do is talk to people, and I make money. Guess what? The same thing in real estate happens, too. That's what we do. We talk to people. So if you have a VA to help you on one side of your business, all you do is spend time talking to people. Isn't that great? We talk to people and we could just make money. 80-20. There you go. 80-20. Yes, I love it. Okay. So yes, that's exactly what I think. Okay. And Harry, it, yeah, Harry can ahead. you share what VA platforms you use? Whether it's you can put it in the chat or something like that. Um, what I can do is, let's see. I know that we have uh, at KW in our office, uh, there's a company called Cyberbacker, okay? And I do, you know what? Um, if you want, I could give you the name of the the one that I'm currently using. The one I'm using, you, you probably have to train them to a, a, some extent. Maybe that's why it's $5 an hour. But I don't mind training because the more I train, the sharper I am too. I want to also understand what's going on, okay? So I will get that information. I don't have it off the top of my head. I know somebody just gave it to, so I'll have to find it and then get it to you. So if anybody wants to get a hold of me, um, you can, um, let's see, like, can I put it in chat somewhere? Hey, Raymond, can you help me with this just real quick? And I'm going to have Raymond put my contact information down uh, in the chat. Okay. See, tech, technology and all that stuff, I love it, but I always have a lot of people do it. So I can, maybe I can give you, or we can go here and just put in the chat my contact information. Um, I don't know what you're... Okay. So we could put uh, Harvey at connect8888.com. Harvey at connect, the word connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, and then 8888.com. Yeah, that's that's me. RV at connect. Yes. Okay. I just realized we're on the wrong Zoom. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So Raymond's going to put in chat my um, email address. And then if you email me that you want um, to know who I'm using, I will get you the contact information. Okay. I would highly recommend you learn these kind of processes first you want to understand what you're doing so that when you're training someone you know how long it takes you don't want to hire someone who's going to be there and just be there and not do it okay i want i have expectations when i hire someone i i need for them to perform okay so that's being purposeful you want to make sure that you hire that person they're going to you're going to maximize everything they can do Okay, so uh, did you did everybody get my email address? It's in yes. the chat. Okay. Great. Email me and I will get you the, the contact information. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. To utilize that these kinds of services to make you better, I learned a lot of this from other people in the office that are using it. So uh, that's good that Deepak, you're using a VA. It's it's nice. And uh, Susie, have you contacted uh, a person yet? Are you thinking about it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, no. When when you're ready. But learn the process yourself so you understand what they have to do. If they don't, if you don't understand it, I would do it at least once before you go and hire an assistant or somebody like that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, let me move this down here. So, by the way, the command is also, there's an app for it, too, on your phone. So you can carry it around and communicate with your clients. 
Okay, so take advantage of command in that way too. And there's the app, a picture of the app, if you can see it. So you can download that and you could take you and your clients anywhere. Okay, you could be virtual yourself. They nobody will ever know. All right. Okay, let's see. And that app is also for your consumers. Okay, so you can. Let's see, let me minimize this. Okay. Okay. Talk about market center. Well, I'm not going to talk about ours. Everybody should know about theirs a little in your team meetings. They'll share this. So let's keep moving on. Okay. And uh, this one is the, okay, MVV, okay, mission, KW Cares. We talked about a little about this. Oh, um, the ALC members. I've been on ALCs. Uh, hey, Raymond, do we have a plug for this? Batteries running low. <laughs> Hate to have this uh, go out. So the ALC members, by the way, it, I've been on committees, ALC committee or councils that we had 20 plus people. It could be as many as that. Or ours, I think the one we have in our office is like about eight people, but it could be many more. And there's committee members. Anybody could be part of the ALC to some extent to participate. Okay, in committees as well. So that's how we learn more about the office and you help put, you have your input and influence what happens. Okay. Okay, let's see. I think we're going to keep moving on so that we can get further down. Let me find where we're going to go. Let me by the way, profit share, okay? Let's just touch on profit share. So anybody that you actually um, introduce to join KW, you don't have to do the recruiting part or anything like that. Basically, you just introduce, thanks Raymond, uh, just introduce KW to them. Someone that you enjoy working with. We like to work with people that are nice and that you enjoy working with and introduce that person to your team leader. And the team leader will take it from there, okay? They will try to help uh, have that person put under your tree, as they call it, okay? And from there, you'll be able to get um, profit share if, you know, if they're pr producing. And how will they be successful? Well, that 20% of that, uh, uh, the top 20% of the ALC, those people will be trainers, people that are proven and that they have the experience. So there's a lot of people who will go up there and help train these people for you to help them be successful. And if they're successful, you're going to profit. So that's how we help each other. And with the, this is pure passive income, as they say. There's no financial risk, no legal risk, no down payments, no phone calls, nothing. This is just something that you'll get from... Uh, KW at corporate, okay? And by the way, it, again, this profit share tree, it was invented by the agents, not Gary Keller. The agents de uh, developed this system, okay? Oh, KW, I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but KW has a lot of companies that they built. One of the ones that I started utilizing was Keller Mortgage, okay? They, and they have the Zero Plus program. What is that? Well, the Zero Plus program I use to lock in my buyers. So if you talk to your buyers and you say, hey, how would you like to get into a mortgage program if you need a lender and you need financing that's going to pay for your closing costs, your lender fees, and your appraisal fees? This is about 1% of the total purchase price of the transaction. So what is that? So if a million dollar transaction, 1% is $10,000. So if you're buying a million dollar house, who's going to give them $10,000 about? Okay, I'm going I'm to say almost equal to 1%, sometimes more. So when I talk to my buyers, I say, hey, there's $10,000 you don't have to spend. Isn't that great? 
And then, of course, who wants to spend? When I first bought my first home, I said, what are these costs? I didn't know what they were. Honestly, I was shocked. I said, I don't, where's this money come from? I had to go borrow money from relatives or some family members to be able to close on my first home. And so now with homes rising here and the, geez, I think the average, average price is well over a million, right? In San Jose, it's 1.2 to 1.3, something like that. So again, if it's a $2 million house, that's $20,000 they're going to save. If you go to any other institution, one of the big ones like Wells or B of A or Chase or City, they're not going to do that. So this way, if your clients, the buyers you have, you talk to, they want this program, the only way they can get it is if they use a KW agent. That is the rule. If they go somewhere else, they can't get it. So that's how I start introducing it to many of my clients. And I knew they were locked in like handcuffs. They had to use me to get it. Okay. So this is what you can do for yourselves. And it's just, you know, another lead generating tool that you can use. It's called the zero plus program. Okay. All right. We can, I'm just going to touch on that, but there's other programs. We just got to keep moving because I don't want to hold everybody up too much. There's other communities, diversity, equity, and inclusion. There's commercial, KW land, KW luxury. The military, I did not know about. KW, KW new homes, not sure. Sports and entertainment, KW young professionals. There's all kinds of things here. But um, there are many communities that you can get involved with, okay? Okay, keep going. Okay. Your vision, your future. Let's get to that. Okay. Actually, did you find? By the way, when we talk about um, something that we talk about is, especially when you're fairly new, we talk about how much money you're going to earn. Okay. And in this act, okay, you estimate how much you'd like to earn to pay for the things that are most important to you. So first, let's get a real, uh, get real about your, how commissions work. Many agents get the check for their first closing, uh, pocket it all. It's pretty exciting. And then they get in trouble down the line. So let's talk about where the money goes and how much will actually be going toward uh, your goal. These numbers are very general and are meant only as an example. Uh, uh, actual amounts will vary, espe uh, especially if you're on a team. Okay. So I don't know if you know, depending on the, the cap that you have in your office, okay, it could be, let's just pretend right now it's 30. It's a round number. I just want to use a round number. If you have a, if you're a team member on the team, your cap could be half of that, 15,000 rather than 30. Then you have another split that you'll um, decide on and agree on with whomever your team leader is. Okay. So things could happen like that. Um, okay. So when you get to your share, there's a lot of different uh, thinking that you're getting a full commission. But here's an important habit to start now put money away for your taxes. When I first started, I remember not putting away money for my taxes. So about 25%, that's what I was putting away after a while so that I could be able to pay that off at the end of the year to Uncle Sam. And if you don't, all of a sudden, like you pay it because you're doing all these other things. It's a big chunk of chain that Uncle Sam's going to and that you're paying to. But being a realtor also, you should know that there's a lot of deductions you can have to save money. Okay, so if you have a good CPA, okay, you should be able to write off a lot of different things from KW with your travel, marketing expenses, business expenses, okay? Uh, I, I do it all, and we do it all the time. You can even do it on your vacation, which I think I told you some of them, I told some of you that I did. I went to New York, I went to the KW office there, and I told them, hey, would you mind if I taught a class here? And they thought I was crazy at first. But I said, I told him the real reason was I want to write off my taxes. So if I teach a class here, I can do that. 
or do some other stuff. So they let me do it. Next year, they asked me to teach two hours. And then the next year, the third year I went, because I went back three years, they made me do it for four hours, okay? Mm -hmm. And I said, I told them, hey, I'm on vacation here. Four hours is a lot of time. But then as I found out, I really benefited from that. I met like this one class they told me about, hmm, might get 10, 12 people. There was 55 people who showed up. So guess what? I have 55 other people that are now in my network because if I have to refer people, I'll refer to them. Or if they have people they want to refer to me in California, I got all of them. So it's a great way to network, okay? Just walk into office. You don't have to teach a class, okay? Just go in there and say, hey, you got good investment opportunities here. I was just checking what it's like in your office. Pick up some paper and hey, that's your, your tax write-off right there because you just were looking into business, okay? Simple as that, okay? All right, let's see. Yes? I had a question like today that I was coming here to ask some that know about tax. Mm -hmm. So I'm filing my tax. Um, that's just the question um, in my mind that can I write off the um, the the commission I paid to Keller Williams and TC um, P and the that's so a good question. The thing is, yeah, they already uh, take it before mm -hmm. before my final income. Right. So that is, is that considered business then? That that's a business thing and is ex expense, right? So the best thing to do is this. So when anybody talks to you about taxes, we are not tax people. We avoid answering questions about tax. However. Okay, um, to me, that is an expense, but I would talk to your CPA and they know how to handle it and categorize it so that whatever you put it under, you're not going to get audited. Okay, I did meet a very good uh, tax person that I use now. I used to use my uncle. He never got me a return and I got audited once. Okay. So I, I, I eventually he retired and that was the best thing for me, probably the best thing for him. Cause I went to another person. I've been getting returns ever since. And this guy, he even tells me, okay, if you want to refinance your home, you need to earn at least X amount of dollars. He knows, okay, what I need to earn so that I can deduct X amount of dollars so that I could be at that whatever threshold. And then that way I can get my, because if you don't earn a certain amount of income, if you have a home, then you can't deduct from your taxes either, right? I mean, you can't um, uh, refinance or something. So I had to learn all that stuff. So it's good information because then you can also, uh, actually, you really need to have these people in your team a tax person, an attorney, handyman, contractors. This is part of you building your network and your team. And you are the resource. So if I am your client, I'm going to say, hey, you got a good insurance person. You got a good attorney. You got a good CPA. They're going to keep. And then the more you can give them, they're only going to come to you. You want to be that main resource so that you get all kinds of business. And in turn, they'll refer people to you too. Okay. So... I don't know if that helps answer your question about taxes, but we really want to avoid those as professionals when you're talking to clients because we could get ourselves in trouble. Okay, tell them to talk to their tax person. But in general, I'm going to say, yes, those are expenses that you know you, you want to write off and deduct. Okay, you can itemize those things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let's. I want to skip on because I want to get through the big life. Yeah, okay, that's success you need to motivate it. I think we're, your commission. You know what I tell people, this is just a quick thing about where your dollar goes. So when your client asks you for your commission back, I'm just gonna to touch on this real quick. I hate giving back rebates or whatever you wanna call it. We all do, right? And it's gonna happen. And it's never going to stop, okay? <laughs> but you have to know how to overcome that objection. So I'm just going to say, 
you have 3%, and most times it's actually 2.5%, but let's just pretend it's 3%, because I, I know like Yvette Peterson here, she does 7% things, okay? But let's just, uh, for just for our discussion today, let's do 3%. So your client wants 1%, they want you to give them something back. You tell them, hey, 1% goes to Uncle Sam. I lose that in taxes. 1% goes to my broker. That leaves me with 1%. And after all the expenses that I have to use or utilize to, to help you, I don't have that much. Because they think, okay, you have nice clothes. You have a nice car. You probably make a lot of money, right? But you have to be able to talk to them. And so they don't take your money. And the thing is, whether you have a good car and nice clothes, it doesn't matter. You work hard. You earn it. Okay? So you should have it. And I'll be honest. When I first started, I was terrible. I was giving away a lot of my commission. And, and after a while, I got tired of it. So I started using okay, my transferable skills that I got from HR and what other people are telling me on how not to give people back there instead you could do something else okay that's a whole nother class how to overcome objections and that's important because we do want you to save your money and not give it away sometimes you have to okay one person she cried in front of me i had no defense so i gave her something back because i didn't want her to cry but i was not prepared for that other than that uh, i'm pretty good otherwise and i'd be happy to tell people other things okay so let's move on from so there, there's the one and then there's one more and that's all you got left right if you see this on your screens okay yeah i've seen a lot of people like telling me that agent xyz offer this can you match that and i was like um <laughs> good point you just asked me and i said 2.5 and call back it's okay that group of agents in our office which I don't want to say, but that I have, I heard it all the time. And I was like, um, I will do my best to get the best value. Like, what do you want to do on a sale? You want to buy? I'm right. Like, you that purpose. Because mm -hmm. I did it. I give back 1% mm -hmm. last year. Yep. And I feel like, why? I'm not, now I paid my tech and I calculate my money. I give a lot. I was like, I don't want to do it. Okay. Work by 10 times more than people work like five times um, the same work and they get the same amount of money. Right, right. Um, this happened to me too. Okay, just a quick story. Um, it was, I was in Cupertino at the time, coming to the very, very end of a good transaction that I had. And the person asked me, Hey, Harvey, there's a person in your office we could have used, but we chose to use you. And the other person said they would give me something back. I'm inside. I'm actually steaming. I'm thinking, who the heck in our office is going to do that and make me look bad? So I said, okay, so I just want you to know that there's a reason why you said you chose me. Okay. And... I think it's probably because of my experience level, because not all agents have the same experience level. So you could work with a very experienced agent like myself, or you could work with someone else, maybe less experienced. Now, I don't know who you're talking about. Could you tell me that person's name that gave me the name? Well, that person is more experienced than me. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay. This yeah. person... And have a whole team more experience. Been here for like twenty years. Oh, uh, that's a tough like, one. Okay, and then the next day she was. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I chose to use. Uh, I chose to work with them. Um, I wish I have ten houses to sell, but but oh, they what it is. I was like, okay. Thank you. I will try to buy you a buyer. Mm -hmm. I cannot be <laughs> this nature. Well, okay. Let's put it this way: whether you're working on a team or as an individual. There's a there's advantages to both, and you need to know how to overcome them. And this is probably not the right class to discuss it all, but what what would I say about the team? The only thing about the big team is the big team because why do they come together as a team? Sometimes people specialize in only one thing, and they're only good at one thing. And then when you get passed on from one person to another, you're not really getting that 
personalized, individualized attention that I will give you, right? What do you want? Do you want that personalized, in, personal, uh, personalized, individualized attention that I can give you in, in, in all my attention? Or do you want to go to a team where, hey, maybe sometimes you're working with person X or person Y or person one or something like that. You don't know who you're going to be talking to sometimes. One person will come in, sign an agreement. Next, thing, you'll be passed on to someone else and someone else and someone else. Is that what you, if that's what you like, that's fine. The only people who care about the big team is the big team. I'm just talking, right? Then I can go the other way too. You have to be able to go the other way and say, well, the individual person can only provide you so much, okay? If you go with the big team, we have all these resources and stuff. You got to be able to go the other way too, okay? So, because I've learned one way, then the person approached me another way and I go, gee, now I'm stuck again. <laughs> so we have to learn different ways to overcome these yeah. objections. We'll probably have to get a panel together of people, of really good agents, and then you ask these tough questions and you learn how to overcome them. But I hate, you know, when when people are always asking me. But anyway, by the way, they did tell me the name of the person and I didn't say anything bad. I never say anything bad. We never want to be negative. I said, oh yeah, that person's a great agent. They come to my trainings all the time. So immediately <laughs> that dropped the person down a few level, but I didn't, I didn't need to know that. I just said, hey, I love that person, right? But they, they, there's, there's a reason why they chose me, because I saved them money. You talk about the things that you did for them, okay? If you talk about those things, you're going to be fine, okay? There's other ways to make uh, your clients feel guilty. I, I, I know those tricks too. So I've been doing this for a while. So maybe you have to learn some of these tricks and things like that, because then that way they won't come back and say, yeah, you know what? I, you know, I, I know this agent and that agent will do this and that agent. I, I tell them, I'll say, you know what? I guess if you don't know any agents, you just don't have any friends, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of people out there that are part-time agents. There's agents that are in companies. They got their license. They didn't come. And many of the people that are here, they did not really do real estate for a long time. So that happens too, okay? So I think we're going to do the daily success system. Talk about that, okay? And uh, the daily success system requires we talk to people every day. It's important to know what to say, and we will help you through Ignite. Throughout, It'll help you throughout Ignite. You will have conversations of care and gratitude. You will check in with people. You will offer value and assistance, okay? Notice I didn't say you are calling, okay, to ask if they need to buy or sell. Um, okay, rather, okay, it's it's because there's a better way to gain confidence, stay in touch. And uh, when they think of real estate, they'll think of you. Conversations strengthen relationships. Okay. Okay, I want to get into okay. So if you see these things here, the convert 10 conversations every day, this is what they ask you to do. 10 conversations a day with somebody. And, and I think there's an area where they want to talk about, it's with your sphere of influence. Okay, I'm skipping around because of time, but your sphere of influence are people you know. It's a lot easier to talk to them. And you're not gonna ask them, do you want to buy or sell? You're not gonna ask them that. You're gonna ask them, do you know someone who wants to buy or sell or that you can help. That's the way to approach it. But when you first start out, okay, I'm going to talk to, I'm going to skip over to, let's see. Oh, by the way, going back to this real quick, 10 contacts needed added. So you can always do that. 10 handwritten notes and the 10 five, one social media engagement. So we're going to go through some of this. I want to get, skip over it. Okay, by the way, they told, there are people, if you're making cold calls, I don't do that because this the no call, do not call this and stuff. People call me all the time. And uh, I'll be honest, I hang up a lot. <laughs> okay, I block the calls if I don't like it. But if you want to practice and have fun because that's they're calling you, practice reverse interviewing. I used to have these people soliciting me to do loans. They wanted me to refinance my house. So I talked to them. I said, wow, you're really good at what you do. Do you ever think about getting into real estate? Because I think you'd be the perfect candidate to be at 
where we're at and I invite people in and it's worked. Okay, so you can test your skills that way. Okay, now, okay, powerful con conversations, get results, okay? Uh, and six, the six, this success system, okay, that we talk about to people every day, it's important you know uh, what to say and we will help you throughout Ignite, as I mentioned, okay? Uh, you're going to lead generate undercover motivations, identify objections, close deals, speak in terms uh, the customer understands, and build confidence. Okay, let's see. I want to get to this other system. Well, sphere of influence is the people that you know. These people should be in your command, and they should be on the 12 direct, the 8 by 8 and the 33 touch. They could be, there's a buyer, there is a buyer a seller and like the, the people that aren't ready, uh, one of those programs for each one of them, by the way, okay? So get on to, and then there's gonna be a person here, Brian Lee, who's our tech trainer in in-house. In and we, we can set up classes or you can call him and do one-on-ones, okay? So catch your sphere of influence. Okay, this is the one that I, I wanna just quickly talk about, okay? Um, when you talk to someone, I, I just start off on Facebook by doing this, okay? And what do I do? I'll call 10 people, or not call, but I'll look up 10 people that I know. How many people did you say you have on Facebook? On Facebook? Yep. More than 600. 600, right? So pick out 10 people and just say, hi, how are you doing? I don't want you to say anything else. Start a conversation. Mm -hmm. This is part of this, the Ford method, okay? And ha has anybody else heard of the Ford method? Okay, so you can see it stands for family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. So when you talk to someone, it's always reciprocal, right? So they'll say, hey, how are you doing today? Great. Okay, and then what are you going to do? Right. Oh, things are good. So how's your family going? How's the dog? <laughs> fine and how's everything to do your kids yeah okay see that's basically what we want to do go back and forth back and forth and on facebook if you want to start a simple conversation hey how you doing haven't heard from you a long time leave it at that don't say anything else just or say it's a long time no see just do that and just start these conversations you got 600 people it's going to take you a while okay every day do 10 and you're going to be surprised maybe over time you, you start to talk about family. Then you talk about the occupation, say, so what are you doing these days for work? Are you still at that same job? Uh, uh, you know, have you left it? Are you looking for something else? What's what's going on these days? So then, then, and then I'll, I'll talk about my thing. And I'm gonna say, so what do you do now? How about your job? And what are you gonna tell me? Cause you're a KWA, what are you gonna tell me? So I started my real estate business mm -hmm. and I'm selling homes and selling dreams. So if you are um, looking for a home or if you know anybody who's planning to buy or sell, just ping me. Okay, perfect. And you don't want to say more than that. You want to say, I'm working at Keller Williams. This is what I do. And you don't want to say too much about you because you want... you the, 80-20 is not about you. It's about them. So I'm going to tell them, this is what I do. I'm at Keller Williams. I'm really enjoying what I do to help people to buy or sell or invest in homes. But let's get back to you. Make them, make it about them. Okay. So what have you been doing these days? Have you been like boating, traveling, hiking, biking? You know, talk about their hobbies and recreation. Okay and get back to them. And at the very end, I usually never get to the dream part. Hey, where are you going to uh, retire or whatever? Okay. I hardly ever get there. Okay. But I do when it's time to end it, because sometimes that conversation go really long. Okay. Here's something that I tell people to do. Okay. Because you're talking to them. So you have to show like, hey, you care about them and you want to help them. So one of the things I always say is, how do I know when I'm in front of someone, okay, if this person would be a good candidate for you? And all of a sudden they're thinking, oh, he wants to help me out. 
maybe you know someone, maybe you don't know anybody like that thing. But I, I say that. This is how you get, as they say, endless referrals. How do I know when I'm in front of someone if this person could be a good candidate or maybe a patient or whatever for you? And they see you care. If you keep giving them referrals and you're helping their business, then it's reciprocal and they will help you. Now, they don't. I've done this to my cousin who's a dentist, right? I've referred people to him. Say, hey, Doug, you notice that I've been sending people to you? Would you have anybody that you know that I can help maybe that you can refer to me? Uh, I'd love to keep uh, referring people over to you too. And, and so I will tell them and I'll just say it with a little guilt on there too, okay? Then I start getting people. And I even got him to be my client, okay? So, and, and doctors make a lot of money, so it's good to work with those guys. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, let's see. Let's see. By the way, when someone gives you a referral, okay, I, wrote, I put this down as a note to tell you, okay? This is huge, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's just say... Um, Adrian, you gave me a, a referral, okay? This is how I make the call, okay? I'll say, hey, Samantha, uh, I just got a call from Adrian, and I promised Adrian that I would call you immediately. What does that sound like? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I promised Adrian I would call you immediately. Well, number one, it makes Adrian look like he cares. And number two, the other person that I talked to, okay, they feel, wow, that person cared about me. And now I'm talking to someone because they need help. That way you make a solid bond immediately. The connection is there. So this is something that I always do. And I always get the referral, okay, <laughs> right off the bat without even saying more. So that's something I would, if you don't remember, you should write it down. Okay, how do I, okay, um, as far as when I'm in front of someone, you know, I tell them, hey, hey, okay, I'll say, I'll say, hey, Ben, you know, I promised Adrian I would call you immediately. Simple, okay, that hooks them, okay. All right, let's see, let's move on. Oh, actually, we're actually towards the end now anyways, from this thing. Uh, okay, we're at the ahas. So actually, that's the end. This went on a little longer. Like I said, these things are supposed to go um, for maybe four hours, but I had to skip over things to get to towards the end. Uh, let me say this, okay? Uh, let me go back one. Let's see. There's Oh, this slide, okay? I just want to talk about this slide real quick, okay? Okay, this graph depicts when people are likely to move, which NAR has found that the average person moves every seven to 10 years. The peaks are the moment a person moves. Now in Silicon Valley, the peaks are every five years, okay? In Silicon Valley, because we are in the semiconductor area. So every five years, that's what I'm saying usually happens because the market goes up and down uh, and, and happens here. Now, when it happens though, people are afraid that the market goes down, but actually it continues to go up on an incline, whereas in the semiconductor, it's flat, okay? So that's the way it is there. So I just wanted you to sort of know that I use these kind of graphs when I'm talking to them. I just draw it out, okay? So anyway, let me go back to the ahas, okay? Each day in Ignite, okay, you will grow in how you think, feel, act, implement what you've learned from learning ahas okay if there are any uh, big moments or something you'll be able to use those in the next few sessions that you're coming to so this is sort of an introduction about the belief systems and things like that but i wanted to give you a couple things that i do and so you know learning how to overcome objections that's that's big i think you're going to go through some of that here learning how to work with buyers or sellers how to put your models together all this stuff is going to come together it'll make sense okay so the first section is just learning about that and if you're persistent and consistent with what you do you're going to be better than other agents because most agents 
They call once, that's it, okay? Babe, by making one more call, sending one more text, sending more, one, one more email, you're doing more than 50% of all the other agents already, okay? Any questions? No questions, okay, that's good. But if you do, you can, I have, here's my card here. You can grab my card and I'm happy to help anybody answer any questions. You need advice on something. We're interdependent. We help each other. We can learn from each other, okay? Anybody else on Zoom or did everybody still on? Okay, they left, a lot of them left, okay. Harvey. <laughs> yes. Harvey, um, one thing I found out on command is the smart plans, they have to be customized. Mm -hmm. Because yes. I was sending them and, and, I, and I finally said, well, let me look what the smart plan is. And there's information on the smart plan, which was the long-term nurture that I was using mm -hmm. that didn't, you know, didn't go with what was going on today in today's market. So I, I learned that, you know, I have to customize them. So I, I, I share that because in the amount of times that I've heard people talk about command, I haven't heard that before, that they need to be customized. You know, that oh. I think that needs to be emphasized, that you need to customize the smart plans. The smart yes. plans are templates. you got to get in there and customize them to your market, to how you work. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, that's what I was sort of touching on because you're not going to sell or send the uh, put someone on the 33 touch on the sellers when they're actually buyers and vice versa that kind of thing right, right. so and then you're going to send a different message so you can easily do that kind of stuff okay again whoever is the tech person in your market center get with that person and the guy in like santa clara he'll help anybody his name is brian lee and brian will sit down with anybody and go through it with you i love the feature that they have on there so just pretend i'm looking in san jose uh or santa clara let's just take santa clara where i'm at right now brian can easily put together within like a minute he can just click on these things and it'll do, uh, send a video for all the people that are buyers that are looking in Santa Clara of like some of the top features. And it's a cool like little video that just customize and it's branding him or me, okay, with my, the customers and stuff. So learn about these things if you haven't and, you know, talk to the, the tech person that's in your office. They'll definitely be uh, a benefit to you and your clients. And yes, good point that you brought up about uh, customizing. Again, it's it's that personal individualized attention you want to give to each person, right? Correct. Yeah, so that's, that's a good point. Okay, um, everybody should have my contact information. If you need something or want to talk uh, about something else, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Um, I don't know. Let me see if my, um, where's the chat? Let me go to, where's the, the chat? Okay. Let me put my phone number in there just in case. Um, 408-661-4121. So enter. Okay. So that's my phone number. If anybody has any questions, call me. I'm always around. And, uh, Feel free to, you know, pick my brain and who knows, I may pick your brain or, or something like that. You never know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. And thanks for attending. And I, the other classes, you have great instructors and I know that they're going to do a great job in, in helping you with your careers. Okay. And I, I, I hope that when I get a chance to meet some of you who I haven't met, I, I can shake your hand and congratulate you on closing transactions. Okay. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. I think I stopped. I'm leaving. People are leaving. Leave.